title today is Percent Composition by Mass. We have a molecule here, and this molecule is carbon dioxide, CO2. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can describe uh, this compound. So, we could say carbon dioxide is made up of carb one atom of carbon, two atoms of oxygen. And because carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide, that is always going to be its formula. That's always going to be its description. Carbon dioxide is made up of one atom of carbon, two atoms of oxygen. Now we could make this a bigger amount, and instead of saying an atom and two atoms, we could actually expand this to say a mole. We could say, well, if we have one mole of carbon dioxide, that means we have one mole of carbon atoms and two moles of oxygen atoms. Okay, so we can describe this thing by the number and types of pieces that are in this molecule. But because we know now that each element has its own particular mass and it's always the same, we can also describe this, this compound in terms of the mass percent of each element. Okay, so let's just write this down. There are two ways to describe the composition of a compound. Number one, in terms of the numbers and types of atoms present. Present, not presence, present. Like I said, one atom of carbon, two atoms of oxygen. Or we can describe the composition of this thing in terms of the percentages by mass of its elements, meaning of the total mass of this compound, what percent of that mass is coming from the carbon and what percent of the overall mass is coming from the oxygen. In order to do that, let's, here, let's look at this problem. Calculate the percent composition by mass of each element in phosphoric acid, H3PO4. Now, just like any other percentage, percentages are, to find a percentage of anything, it is the part divided by the whole times 100. And there's nothing different about what we're going to do here. We're finding percentages. So, the first thing we need to do is figure out the whole before we can figure out the parts. So, we need to, first of all, determine the molar mass of phosphoric acid. That's our very first job. So, determine the molar mass of the compound of H3PO4. Okay, and if we do that math, what we will find is that the molar mass of phosphoric is 97.99 grams per mole. So our first step is to find the whole, and then we can find the parts. All right, so let's start with hydrogen. Percent composition by mass of hydrogen. So in other words, how much of this, nine? what percentage of this 97.99 is hydrogen contributing? to the overall molar mass. So in order to do that, we are going to take the mass 
of the hydrogen. So we've got three hydrogens. So we're going to say three. And we find the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01. .01. What are we going to divide it by? This is the part that hydrogen is contributing. We're going to divide it by the whole, 97.99. Do I do an equal sign yet? No, because that's not a percentage. What's the last thing I need to do with this before um, I can make it into a percentage? I have to multiply it by what? So that is going to give me 3.08%. So in terms of mass, hydrogen is contributing 3.08% of the entire mass of this compound. Let's go to the next one. How much is phosphorus contributing? Well, phosphorus, I've got one of them, and the molar mass of phosphorus is 30.97, and then I'm going to divide it by the whole, which is 97.99, multiply it by 100, and I'm going to end up getting 31.61%. Okay, by convention, Okay, in terms of significant figures here, you guys, we're going to always take this to the hundredth place. Per percentage by mass, we're always going to take it to the hundredth place. Okay, so in terms of the overall mass of this compound, phosphorus is contributing 31.61% of, of its mass. Okay, last but not least, let's do the oxygen. Percent oxygen. How many oxygens do we have? We've got four. Each oxygen weighs in at 16. Where am I getting these numbers? I'm getting them off the periodic table. Divided by 97.99, multiplied by 100. And that tells me that oxygen is contributing 65.31% of the overall mass of this compound. If we've done things correctly, these three numbers should add up to what? They should add up to 100. That's right. OK, and this is always going to be the same for phosphoric acid. Always going to be the same. That 3.08% of its mass is coming from the hydrogen. 31.61% of its mass and 65.31% of its mass coming from oxygen. Okay, now, we have a machine, scientists have a machine called a mass spectrometer. And a mass spectrometer can give us this data. We can take a sample of a substance and we can feed it into it and we can get percent data of masses out of, out of this machine. And so what can that information tell us? What can that information tell us? Well, based on mass data, because pure compounds have a specific mass percent of each element, it doesn't change because the identity of the elements aren't going to change and their mass isn't going to change. So by getting experimental measurements of mass percent, we can use those to verify the purity of a substance. We can also use that data to identify what an unknown substance is. So we have machines that can actually measure the mass percent of um, each element in a substance.